Oh, well, I mean, uh, the normal traumas of trying to get the funding in, in a really difficult economic climate, so we're, we're hoping that we're fighting our way through. We're just on the verge of forging a really good link with uh, a Dutch company, um, which means that if uh, that goes ahead, we get another sort of bite of the cherry. And uh, the, the thing about Hickson, I've always tried to make it, give it a really international flavour. And what was great last year was obviously the World Dressage Masters, Chef Janssen making it the final selection trial for the Dutch. And uh, that, that took us to another level, being a five-star event. But um, I w we're doing that again with a three-year contract with World Dressage Masters, so we're expecting Totilas again and a host of uh, other equestrian stars. Um, we're also going to run our three-star level, and then we're going to go all the way through, run our Dressage Masters and the whole unaffiliated and affiliated program as well. So it, it's going to be a busy year. So for people that don't know, and, and, and maybe not so much Dressage oh, we're losing the dog. Losing the dog, <laughs> yeah, it's off to kill someone. But for Dressage fans, just explain the setup next door, because obviously everybody knows Hicks did, and that obviously belongs to the Bum family. So where do you fit in, and how is that separated over there? Um, well, we uh, started Hicksit, this is its 17th year now, and some three years before that, uh, I had a rather amusing conversation with Douglas Bunn, where we did a display in the main ring. And uh, I said to Douglas, when are you going to put dressage back in at Hicksit? Because they had had it there previously on the grass. And um, he said, mentioning a few expletives, if you so-and-so want it at Hicksit, you'll have to so-and-so do it yourself. Um, so I was down at his place the next week, saying well how about it and we got the funding and we got together and uh, Douglas was his usual inimitable self he was great really fantastic and we got an area which everyone now knows as the site for dressage at Hickstead and we got going it, it's all done with volunteers enthusiasts um, it has yet to make any money <laughs> um, it, it we thought it had broken even last year and then we suddenly got a 15,000 bill uh, via the BF from the FEI for all the bits and pieces they suddenly felt they were entitled to. So we're currently in dispute on that, but um, that's typical. That that just you know taxation, taxation, taxation. Um, but yeah, that's how it, it it came about, and we just wanted to make uh, it like the international scene. I've been yeah. Now Karen. it's obviously people you know when they come to Hicks, they, they I don't think they realise sometimes that they can just come to the dressage side of things. Now they need to come to your website, don't they? The dressage. Of Hicks yeah, I mean we're linked in obviously on the jumping site, and the main thrust of Hicks has been for many years the show jumping, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, about to renovate the main arena and do all sorts of things. I mean it is, it's one of the few places that you go anywhere in the world. Everybody seems to know. Yeah, Babington, sure. Burley, Hicks did, um, and everywhere else, well, that's what they know about England. They're even slightly interested in horses. Yeah. Uh, but so the, our side, yes, we, we are run as a separate company for all the obvious reasons um, of, of keeping that sort of separation. Um, but we work really closely with the jumping people, and they're all great friends and, and help us hugely in the running of the show. Now it's really important as well for people to know that they can come here just to watch the events and I don't think people realize they run throughout the year as well, don't they? Oh yeah. Um, and you don't have to ride and be a dressage rider no. to come and watch and I think obviously Edward Gow and Totilus have made a yeah. huge impact on that side of things. Yeah. So we, we had the most amazing people come there. We had Ringo Starr there last year who was blown away by Totilas. Um, we have people like Mike Rutherford who's a Genesis guitarist and then we have the most normal people like all of us who are working in normal day-to-day -day jobs who come and make the whole thing work um it, it's quite incredible the whole thing is is run by just an amazing team of people who just want to see the sport at the top end and and, and, and make it grow yeah and dressage is obviously really you know there's been a lot of news and it's becoming a lot more popular over the oh, last yeah. year why did you choose dressage how did you get into i think it chose me uh, the last thing i ever wanted to do was work with horses um I was going to do this and do that and do the other. I, I got, I did air crew selection, RAF Finley for fast jets, and I wouldn't have an operation on my nose, so I moved off into another area. Um, I, I just always loved. I got into horses at an early age in in South London, uh, actually in Brixton, and whatever I did, I just seemed to get herded back into the horse game. And then I got an opportunity through uh, Dominie Morgan, as she is now who's a, a, a list of my former international judge for Great Britain. And I, she got me an opportunity to go to Germany and learn. And I think I, at that stage, I would have grabbed a show jumping yard, a dressage yard, anything. I always had an interest in dressage, but I love show jumping. Mm. 
and it just happened from where I came from it seemed let's grab it with both hands and shake it and, and for whatever reason I wound up in dressage which I love Right. And you're still competing today, and I think it's really important to us, let yeah. people know yeah. that you were an inner city. You're a London boy, born and bred, aren't you? Oh yeah, you very know, much you so. Didn't grow up in the country no, like no. With rich parents and strong no, I mean the kind of thing. the thing about having uh, wealthy people in our sport is that we need them, you know, because how do we get the better horses and how do we get the great sponsors? But the great thing about horses in general. And, and I don't think it's something that Great Britain has twigged onto yet, whereas Holland and Germany definitely have. It's very much a sport of the people. It, it's been portrayed in the last few years, particularly since the anti-hunting debacle and banning hunting, as some elitist sport. It, it, it's so far from the truth. I mean, you and I both know jumpers and event riders that, that do it all on a shoestring and some. Yeah. And fine, you know, thank God we've got people who, who have funds that will spend it in our sport. But the whole sport is a very normal sport. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it, it costs money, but it doesn't cost the money at the basic end that people think it costs. No. And where you're, but you're obviously based in Bowley, which is just next door to Hicks yep. And I know your daughter rides now as well, so yeah. she's into it. So what are you doing? Because you still ride at Grand Prix level. Yeah. Um, so competition wise, what are you guys up to this year for both you and, and Anne Marie? Well, I, I did about 12 internationals last year trying to bring. Um, uh, Pauline Harris's mare up to scratch Sydney. Mm -hmm. um, we're moving her on. We, we're still. We, we, she's really doing a nice job now. And we've got to now win a little bit of the politics and hearts and minds and do a better riding job. Um, Anne Marie is junior because of her mum's uh, nationality. She's actually riding for Ireland, and um, but she's just done her first international, proper international in Swallow this year, uh, and did okay. I mean, um, you know, sort of sixty percent sort of scratch off. But then that set her up. She went to a couple of other shows and moved on enormously. So what we're off to in the next two weeks, we're off to Spain mm -hmm. for the Sunshine Tour, which is uh, sounds very glamorous and glorious, and it's lovely when you get there, but it's three days each way in a, in a horse box, um, several thousand kilometres to get there. But it does give us an opportunity to do uh, three consecutive weekends at the Junior Young Rider and Grand Prix level. It's a great outing for the horses. That's the next move. Now, just to touch a little bit on training, I know you're very passionate about training, and we're hopefully in the future we're going to do some some more videos and yep. help people and do some Hope training. so, yeah. How important is the training in dressage? It's everything. It's, it's everything. I mean, it's there's an awful lot of talk now about round and deep and classical. And it, believe me, as a South Londoner, I've never heard such a load of codswallop in my life. <laughs> At the end of the day, Harry Bolt said to me years ago, you need to have everything in your skill set and use the bits that work on each horse. You have to have everything in your tack room, know how it works, and hope you only have to use a fraction of it. The reality is you have to learn all of the angles. You'll never find a horse that has read a book yet. They've all got their own ways about them. But it's about training, and, and the biggest thing about training is find a trainer that really technically does know, that has been there and done it. I mean, when you're talking about international Grand Prix level, you do need somebody who's got more than just a... Um, a learn knowledge on it. That's that's my view. I'm not saying you can't do a lot without it, but you really are going to be limited if somebody hasn't taken that plunge themselves. And you have to then have trust in that trainer. And it's you can't say a trainer's bad because it doesn't work for you. Sometimes you've just got to say it didn't work for me, but this one does. And and it's such a personal thing training at, at, a, at any high level. It's about gelling. And but the training is everything. And and you cannot make in reality six or seven hundred kilograms of horse do what it doesn't want to do you can force to it to an end but you never get anything out of it but you have to find a way um and anyone that watches isabel worth ride anyone that watches some of the top riders be it anki be it edward gal you know i think you have to look and what and see the beauty of what they're doing and the quality of what they're doing and the, and the horses are better nowadays than we've ever had before sure. but it does come down to hard work at home and years and years it, it's sort of three to four years to get to Grand Prix and when you get there it's three to four years to make it good and that's if your horse is good enough and stays sound 